The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bruno Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today I'm at the Southwest Agricultural Conference, University of Guelph, Ridgetown campus, and I'm catching up with Dr. Dan Quinn from Purdue University. Dan, how's it going? Good, thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, you're up from Purdue, a five hour drive, uh, and we're here to talk about, you know, um, the corn package, managing corn for high yield. And, you know, um, I guess you started your presentation today about just talking about Purdue uh, and conditions in your neck of the woods last year. Yeah. Pretty good year. Yeah, yeah, another you know state record yield for the state of Indiana. Um, it's kind of been that case, I would say, the last four to six years. Yeah. Uh, really high yielding areas, state record yields, and you know pushing above that that 200 bushel mark for a state state average mm. is, is really good. Now you really talked about the fact that you know you're kind of settling into that incremental yes. um, increases these years. Now two bushels uh, a year, which is not bad, sure. but those big bumps are kind of gone. Talk about what we need to do going forward. You, you talked about you know managing genetics, environment, and management. Yeah, I think you know we we keep on this trajectory of about uh, 1.8 to 2 bushel per acre per year. You know we're we're past the times of the big uh, you know <clears throat> scientific discoveries of hybrid corn and chemical fertilizer and stuff like that. Um, so now it's a lot of incremental changes and, and a big piece of that is breeding, right? Yeah. So genetics, you know, hybrid selection is so important when it comes to starting that corn off and having high yield potential. But then you also bring in the management side as well and the way we manage it and being more efficient in how we manage it and being better managers can also be another key to, to maintaining mm. that. And then you bring in the E, right? The yeah. environment, that's that's the one that's always, you yeah, know. have that nice timely rain. <laughs> exactly. We can't control it, but it, you know, Mother Nature always gets hers when it comes to yields and, and potential throughout the year. So mm. it's something we have to pay attention to. Yeah. Let's talk management. You've been doing a lot of research um, yeah. the last couple of years. You talked today in your presentation about 22 and 23, some research you did in both of those years. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you set that up. You looked at a lot of different treatments, a lot of different inputs. Uh, you know, uh, give us a snapshot of the whole, how, the setup. Yeah, you know, a big piece of this research is, you know, we, we work with a lot of farmers across the state and they, they have a lot of questions of, of what works, what doesn't. I keep on, the big question is how do I get better at, at yield and there's so many different products there's so many different decisions and management decisions they have to make so we come in and, and try and look at okay what are some of those popular ones or the ones we get the most question on and can we look at it from a research trial across a lot of different environments so we went from Michigan all the way down to Kentucky throughout Indiana with trials we had very field scale trials with commercial farm equipment um, but looking at a lot of these different inputs and management practices in the same field, in the replicated, in the same environment, and getting a good contrast of, okay, if we add a lot of these management practices, or if we intensively manage this corn, how does that impact yield compared to just, say, status quo? Yeah. And also, within that, is, is there maybe one, two, or three inputs that are, are doing all the work? You know, is there some... Yeah. You know, we're in much more challenging economic times now than we were in 2022. Um, so you start making those decisions, okay, those are some things we can cut out. So that's right. another piece of this. Yeah. So, hey, maybe we'll start there. Let's talk about the intensive first. Yes. I mean, um, I, I think over two years, basically we were looking at 16 bushels yes. uh, each year um, for intensive management, a whole bunch of inputs. Um, great to have big yields, but I think that costs some money. <laughs> costs some money. So in just about every location we did that, when we managed the corn intensively, and that's just, you know, additional fertility, something like sulfur, micronutrients, fungicide is a big piece of that at planting and, and also foliar fungicide at tassel and seeding rates and these different things. We combine all those on average, right, it was about 16, 17 bushel from 2022 to 2023. The flip side of that is is when you do everything right. For us, it was about $100 per acre um, more. We had some sites that had really big yield responses where we were able to get that pay in 2022 when corn prices were much better. Um, but across the board, we actually found that we it was about break even or actually losing some money, even though we we're still getting that, that higher yield. No, Dan, um, as I say, not a lot of money to be made when you're throwing everything, the kitchen sink, at the crop. But, you know, there were some of those treatments that really, you know, made a difference. And a lot of your focus was on that today, especially that fungicide treatment at R1. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, in terms of corn production for the state of Indiana, I think Ontario as well, the last few years we've had a lot of disease. Yeah. Tar spot is a big one. Tar spot is big in Ontario. It's big in Indiana. Um, so our trial years, 2022, even all the way through this year, we've, we've had a lot of disease. Tar spot has been a big big you know culprit of some of these yield losses we've seen so you look at 
R1 fungicide that tends to be the most consistent fungicide response that we see so tends to be the best time to apply our fungicides right at tassel. Um, so that was the input that across the board stood out to us. You know, a lot of times our, our intensive would be 16 bushel, but the fungicide by itself without all the extra stuff was 16 bushel. Yeah. That gives you a good indication of which input was doing all the work. Yeah, and, and the key here as well is you talked about management, right? That, uh, that fungicide, it gives you the late season plant health. It mm -hmm. gives you the opportunities to, from a kernel and a kernel weight perspective, mm -hmm. that late season engine keeps rolling, right? Yeah, I think, you know, the big piece that we always talk about is, is corn yield isn't made at one time. It's made throughout the entire season. And so we have to manage these stresses throughout the entire season. Um, disease management is a big piece of that. Fertility management is a big piece of that as well. But when we have these foliar diseases like tar spot that can come in, they basically take over the plant. You know, they, they occupy all this photosynthetic leaf area with their lesions and then they basically shut down that plant. Um, same thing can happen if you're deficient in nitrogen or deficient in nutrients. But what we're trying to do is keep those stresses away, keep that disease away so that plant can keep being a photosynthetic factory. And when it's able to do that, you know, I always say a corn plant's sole goal in life is to fill its ear and have kernels, mm. and it has to be healthy to do that. Um, so if we're able to maintain that health a little bit later, later in the season, because we're still making yield later in the season, as we get closer to maturity, we're able to tack on, you know, a little bit bigger kernels, a little bit heavier kernels, and that's where additional mm. yield can come from. But uh, the other point you made as well, hey, it's not about just blanket co footage, I'm sorry, blanket coverage and spraying every acre. You, you, you've got to be strategic. Yeah, you have to be strategic especially when you get into these tougher economic times that we're in. Um, there's a lot of cases that, you know, you run into environments where we don't have much disease at all. And something like a fungicide, you know, I always get asked the questions, well, did you have an environment with no disease and did you see a yield response then? And often the case is no. Um, you know, with this trial, we had a lot of disease in a lot of environments, but there's a lot of cases we always talk about you got to manage corn throughout the entire year, but you got to pay attention to your right. corn throughout the entire year. And scouting is still important. Walking those fields, looking at those plants is still important, especially when you get close to tassel because corn is so sensitive. Look for that disease. Look for tar spot. You know, listen to the, the plant pathologist who track it all around the area and say, hey, it's here or it's there. Um, give you a good indication. And when you're doing those targeted input applications and addressing specific needs in your localized environment, that's when you're going to see one, the best, more consistent yield response, but also an economic right. response too. Um, one other thing that sort of stood out, and it's, it's a kind of a hit and miss thing, we're hearing more and more about it, sulfur. Tell sulfur. us about that story. Yeah, yeah. so sulfur uh, really in, in, in the state of Indiana has become more and more of a, an issue showing up. You know, you talk about the Clean Air Act, and that's always the big topic with sulfur. We have less sulfur deposition and stuff like that. It's also that, you know, one aspect is that fertilizers are cleaner. We have a little bit less extra sulfur. And then we're also seeing a lot earlier planting, too. And then you bring in no-till conditions, soil's a little bit cooler and wetter. Um, so it's kind of a perfect storm of all of these factors where we have really been routinely starting to see sulfur deficiency pop up early on in the season. That tends to be one of the bigger calls I get early on in the season is, hey, why is my corn, you know, striped and looking yellow at this point in time? And it's sulfur. Um, so it, it's kind of just incrementally increased in terms of deficiency. So it's been a a big piece of research that we're trying to understand, you know, when to apply, how to apply, at what rates, and, and stuff like that mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, I guess I, just to wrap it up, I mean, let's go back to that message about, you know, for growers, I mean, like, there's so many decisions that they made, but a lot of that's depending on being an expert locally yeah. and, 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 and managing your crop and your environment. Yeah, yeah, that's a big piece with, you know, we do these trials and we do them across a lot of locations and stuff like that. But, you know, I tell a lot of folks, nobody knows your fields better than you do. And the way I always look at it is that corn has a, a certain yield potential when it's put in the ground. Mm -hmm. And then there's just going to be notches that take off of it. And, and what's taking off those those notches off of that yield is different if I stand here in a field or if I walk a thousand feet or go to the next county or the next state. Um, it's very different. But if we want to have high yield, we have to understand in a localized environment in your fields and your farm, year in and year out, what is reducing that yield. And then if we know that, we can address them so that we can limit um, some of that yield reduction. So that's a big piece in, in understanding, you know, we saw a lot of disease responses, but that may not be the case for everyone. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, that was the most prevalent one. So maybe that's one we got to pay attention to a little bit more. And then sulfur, bringing that, maybe we need to pay attention to that a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, but understanding what's limiting yields in your fields and addressing them is, is really important for maximizing yield. Yeah. Well, great stuff, Dan. Hey, appreciate you making some time for real yeah. agriculture here at SWAC. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So.